Okay, so here's the exciting part. Let's bring in our map. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that you want to do is go to Leaflet JS, and I do this even though I've made quite a few Leaflet maps now. Um, I don't actually have the code memorized, and you can sue me for that if you want, but whatever, it's just not how my brain works. And down here, it'll basically tell you how to set up a, um, a leaflet map, but it doesn't always make sense. And actually, I found every time I've done a leaflet tutorial, it never works the first time or even the second or third time sometimes. So I've instead found other tutorials online, including UW Madison's really good ones um, and cartographic perspectives. But even those have some minor typos in them that can really be confounding. So I'm going to walk th through doing this with you here in this video. And then, of course, it probably won't work for me at some point briefly, but we'll figure it out and we'll struggle together if necessary. Long story short, though, basically what you have is you have your jQuery uh, file, and that's pretty much what you're going to need. But you will need to go back to the index and create one new div. And this div should be in your wrapper that we created in the last tutorial. And let's call this div map. And this is just standard. Um, Several other APIs have slightly different wording. That's the default, I think. I don't know. Is Google Google might use map or mapped area or something. But map is almost always the um, ID name you use for the div that your map goes in. And almost every tutorial you find online uses this as the div ID. So I highly recommend you use, uh, I, use the ID name of map. You can use whatever you want, but then it makes it a lot harder to wrap your head around code. For example, here at right on the leaflet front page, var map is a leaflet map that goes in the div map. So you can see where map becomes kind of a, a crucial word. Okay, so that's all we really have to do. Um, I did screw something up already. I'm going to fix that. I will. The div should just end right here. And voila. Now, nothing will really happen if you go here, nothing happens, that's because the div is empty. There is one other thing we have to do in our CSS. We need to give this div a height. So we'll call it map, and we'll give this div a height of 580 pixels. And um, background color of uh, blue, just so we can see it if it's Occurring. There it is. Voila. Now notice our splash screen bumped down. How can we fix that? We just have to give it a, a position of absolute and then give it a at least, there we go. Um, give it a position of absolute and then knock it down a bit. Now why why is it to the left here? I think it actually has to do with our wrapper. I could be wrong, we'll play with that later. Now I'll do it right now. We have a wrapper div that all of these things are in, and we should do margin right, auto, margin left, auto, width 100%. And that didn't make any difference. All right, well, we'll figure that out later. The main thing is it still works. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I give up. Okay, so moving right along, let's get to the leaflet map. In the script file, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a new JavaScript object. Now, for those of you that don't know what JavaScript objects are, I highly recommend you go to the Code Academy tutorials on JavaScript, or you go to W3Schools on JavaScript and look it up. But basically, objects are um, groups of variables clunked to get together. Um, they're kind of like arrays, except they're generally you can have um, ordered uh, order of the ob of the variables in the object doesn't matter. Long story short, we're making a map, and a map's an object. So first thing we have to do is create a, um, a map object, and guess what that's going to be called? That's right, map. And then um, we need to. Ooh, I forgot. We have to import our leaflet script file, but we'll do that in a minute. So in leaflet, leaflet comes with its API, um, with its JavaScript library documentation here. 
and basically you're going to if you click on these you'll see a bunch of different commands you can use once you load the leaflet JavaScript library into your HTML document all of these directions will make sense they're all at your disposal so a lot of these you'll notice start with an L for a leaflet a capital L the proverbial capital L and so this is how you create your first map or instantiate a map basically what we're doing here is variable map what type of what is this variable it is a leaflet map it is going the first thing that you type is in quotes because it's going in this div a div in the web page called map which as you see here we have created a div with the name maps that's going to go in this div all right the next thing we need to do is tell leaflet or the browser basically using leaflet code the leaflet API what this map should look like what should it do etc etc so uh, let's do this let's center this map at um, 33 and 10 so 33 degrees east and 10 degrees or no I don't know exactly I'm getting confused here 33 degrees east and 10 degrees north. Okay, we'll just say that that's what it is. Um, in an object, it's important. You only use commas, not semicolons. So that's confusing at first, but don't panic. Uh, let's say zoom level, I don't know, five, seven. Zoom levels work from small to large. So basically zoom level one would be the entire world up to 20 would be so zoomed in that you could probably see um, people breaking into your house or something. All right, minimum zoom level that we want to have be possible, let's say four, max zoom, 14. And generally you want to have some attribution on your map, basically where are you getting the data from? Some people require it. I'm going to tick everyone off by saying false. I think it looks horrible. We can create attribution or data sources with a button where we click on a button and it provides information to the user. But I'm totally against the fact that it takes up very valuable screen real estate constantly. And so if someone wants to sue me over it, so be it. But that's just bad design. All right. Of course, I say that and I have a huge title. But each to their own. So basically, let's hit save here, let's hit refresh, and nothing has changed. Why hasn't anything changed? Well, let's look at our JavaScript here. Well, first of all, I can tell you why nothing's changed, is we have not brought in the leaflet um, API yet in our uh, index. But beyond that, nothing has changed because we've just created an object. We haven't put the object in our HTML document. It's this, an object, this leaflet map, is just a bunch of variables. We're just telling it, hey, your center point should be at 33 and 10 degrees. Your zoom level should be at seven, um, which is an intermediate range. Your minimum zoom level, the user can't go below four and they can't go above 14. And we're not going to give anyone um, free advertising on our map. All right, how do we know we can even do these things? If you go to leaflet at documentation, it's all right here. So if you go to map creation and click on this, you'll notice I'm right there. It tells you, hey, this is how you do it. This is how you'd create a map. And under options, these are all options we can put in our op in our objects. So map state option options, layers, layers that will be added to the map initially, uh, minimum zoom, max bounds. This is actually an important one. So basically, as far as someone can drag or scroll before it snaps back, we'll do that later. Projections, which no one does, but you can change it. Um, interaction options. Do you want to turn off dragging? Do you want to turn off touch zoom? You can do it all here. They're booleans. So it's just true or false, right? So we could actually, when this map is placed in our website, we could say dragging false. This is going to drive people nuts. It's going to look like a slippy map and they can't drag it, right? So basically, but long story short, you can change all of these features that are in the API documentation. You can go down and you could type every one of these and change them if you really wanted to. Generally, the defaults are what people expect, they're the, what you expect, um, and you probably want to leave those. But 
again, you can change all of these things with the um, state. So have fun with this. Okay, we're only doing these right now. Next step. First, we should have done this first down here in our HTML file. We have not added the leaflet JavaScript library. Good Lord. So let's go to download. Once you've downloaded this once, you never really have to download it again. This is probably the 15th time I've downloaded it for demo purposes. Uh, you download it. Let's see what it looks like when you unzip this puppy. We have a leaflet uh, source file, we have a leaflet CSS, and we have a leaflet JS. These are the two that you need. Um, if you want default marker icons, you should probably paste these into your images folder. So let's do that right now. I'm going to copy. This is, of course, is not the right folder. Where in the name? Ah, there we go. So I paste those images in here. And then we'll take the CSS and the JS file and paste them into the appropriate folders. JS goes in there, and CSS goes in there. All right, good. Now, how do we link to it? You'll probably recall you want, it, again, JavaScript is order specific, so we'll do this after jQuery. JS, leaflet JS, boom, we'll go up here. Lamb. All right. So now we're linked to the Leaflet API. By simply doing this, we are now linked to every command here, everything we want to do with our map, we can do um, using the code that's in this documentation. Just like in jQuery, once you brought that in, you can start using dollar signs and all these crazy things that people have written. Next step. Next step is to actually, and yes, that is a glass of wine you heard in the background. Next step is to actually um, bring in some map tiles. So a leaflet and basically most web mapping now are what are called slipping maps. Google Maps made this famous 10 years ago, actually 10 years ago this week from the day I'm recording this. But they're tiles, they're loaded in the background, and you can click and drag them unless you make dragging false like we did temporarily and basically zoom in and it's a really neat system that you can read about um, in a variety of places including my book long story short though we need to load the tiles from somewhere now you can create and host your own tiles on your own server however this can be a major bandwidth issue you can create tiles on um, with, with a variety of services like mapbox etc and they'll host them for you and if you pay a fee they'll host enough of, for you to make actually do something with but luckily, a bunch of people have designed tiles, and they're hosting them on service at their expense. And those are the ones that we're going to use today. And there are a variety of tiles out there, and um, you could even bring in Google Map tiles if you want using Leaflet. That's fine. But what we're going to do, generally what I recommend you do early on is use OpenStreetMap tiles. Um, I think MapQuest has nicely designed OpenStreetMap tiles you can bring in. Or find um, something like from Stamen Design or um, ArcGIS Acetate. Long story short, let's bring in some tiles. So how do we do this? Well, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, well, if we wanted to do that, what we'd have to do is look here for, you know, bringing in tiles, etc. cetera. Um, so let's look here, tile layer, hmm, let's check that out. All right, so usage example. All right, we've got a new tile layer and blah, 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 blah. Good. All right, let's try this. Let's create a new a variable, though, and let's call this first layer, just for fun, whatever you want to call it. And then let's 
basically type this. It tells you how to do it. So L for leaflet, of course, tile. And notice, because we brought in the JavaScript file, now brackets is giving us hints, which is very nice. But be careful here, because basically some, sometimes these are spelled in different ways. So this is a lowercase tile there, but there is a capital case tile there that will not work. So you need to make sure you use the right one. Now, um, tile layers generally use this formatting. It's the Google Maps formatting, or at least it was based off of Google Maps formatting. Um, feel free to use the OSM method here. What I'm going to actually do though is I have a different one and you can feel free to use this one. It's pretty nice, a nice gray background. It's called acetate and You'll, the formatting will look very similar. In fact, it should be exactly the same, except for a couple of minor name changes here and there, of course. All right, we'll do that. And generally, you do want to give attribution, although this may be overruled with our map. Um, state which says don't show attribution but if someone's donating you tiles for free it is nice to um, what am I talking about and data I don't have data yet all right and then we'll close this out let's see what do we have here and you end it with okay let's just walk through this for a second what is this that we're looking at? Well, if I start to format it, it should make sense. What we're looking at is actually something I've screwed up. Where did I screw up? Ah, I need one more of these little guys before the attribution. So if we look at this, what we have is kind of an object within this tile layer. So basically, just like up here with the map, we create a map. We're creating a tile layer. This is where the tiles are coming from. And then in the object of the tile layer, we're adding some other attributes or, or variables or um, basically properties, you call them with objects. All of that's pretty irrelevant. What really matters, well, the tile server isn't, but what really matters is this, dot add to map. What this is saying is up here, we've created a variable called map. Add this tile layer to this variable called map. And this is, we've created a map. It's just, it isn't showing yet because there's nothing in it. Let's see what happens um, when this is all said and done. Voila. Hey, this still fades away, but I want it back. Oh, no, faded away. So what we have here is Abu Dhabi or something? No, that's quite, not, that's Tunisia. Either way, we have a map that's centered at 3310. I guess that would make sense, kind of. Yeah, and 10 degrees um, east, 33 degrees north of the little, what do you call it, equator. And um, zoom level, let's see how far in we can zoom. I can't zoom out. I'm trying to zoom out. I can't zoom any further out, so that's cool. And can I zoom further in? I'm in the Mediterranean. That doesn't do anyone any good. All right, let's zoom in. All right, it's limited. I can't zoom in too far. I can't see people stalking. Princess Diana. I know she's dead. Um, one thing is, there's no attribution here, because even though I put at an attribution property in the tile layer, we have attribution control false. Let's make that true. Let's hit save. And down here now, it automatically says, hey, we have leaflet. And also we have the tile set from GOIQ, which is exactly what I wrote here. All right. So, you guys have just created your first base map or, you know, bringing in your first slippy map. This should feel pretty awesome. I guess what I'm going to try to do now is figure out how to center the splash screen over the middle. And then the next step is to actually bring in some drone strike data onto this map and maybe switch around some of these controls. Because as you can see, this is not ideal to have the zoom bar up here. Maybe we don't even need the zoom bar. Does anyone use that anymore? Heck no. But anyway, not even my mom, guys. All right, I'll catch you in the next round.